Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to FNAF News! This video is going to be going up very late, so I really do appreciate everyone who's going to watch it when it first comes out, because that means, most likely, you got that bell rung. And if you, for some reason, don't have the bell rung already, what are you doing? I know that I show up in your recommended feed, I know that you come to me just for my FNAF news, hit the subscribe button so you stay notified every time I make a video on FNAF news. And now that I've dealt with all you people who are not subscribed yet, gosh, let's hop into the news. First news is pretty short, uh, it's been out for a few days, but I was able to get my hands on the seventh volume of Fazbear Frights, The Cliffs. Sorry, I had to double check there. I'm losing count at this point. Scott, you're releasing too many books, but I love it. So you can go pick up The Cliffs right now. Again, it's been out for a few days. I believe it came out on the 2nd, and we're gonna have to wait now until May the 4th for the next book. Which, for those of you who can't count, probably the people that aren't subscribed, if we're being honest, is Fazbear Frights book number 8, Gumdrop Angel. Again, that comes out on the 4th of May. Moving over to some pretty exciting news about Security Breach, we now have a actual age rating for the game. This info was posted to the subreddit by Smear Reddit. They are a very credible source, in my opinion, when it comes to getting news from the subreddit, so I do trust their info here. They say a PlayStation Facebook post has confirmed that Security Breach to be PG-16. To compare, Help Wanted was PG-12. Ooh, exciting. So, I would not be surprised if we do see some blood and gore in this game. Definitely not too much because it doesn't have that M or 18 plus rating, but it seems like it's going to be a lot more intense than Help Wanted, and I'm very much looking forward to that. Seems like we're finally going to be able to see the killers actually in action killing some kids, which is not something I'm looking forward to, by the way. I... oh god. Staying on topic with Security Breach, it seems like we have confirmation that PJ Hayward is not voicing the character that we hear at the start of the gameplay trailer. I'm pretty sure we can all determine that, and I'm pretty sure we already figured this out, just because it doesn't have that British tone in it. But for those people who are skeptical, he did confirm on Twitter last week that no, it is not him voicing that character. At least he says it doesn't sound like him and he wonders who it could be, I'm basically taking that as confirmation that no, that's not him. And again, the British tone. We're going through this pretty fast, but that's fine, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Moving on to book news. The ultimate edition of the Freddy Files has had its name changed once again, but this time it's going back to its original name. This dang book has had its name changed like three different times, but it seems like they are finally going back to the original name, the Freddy Files Ultimate Edition. So it does seem like they are finally continuing the Freddy Files, which I'm very happy with. I do enjoy those books. It comes out in November, and it seems like we could have a lot of brand new content in there. Help Wanted, Special Delivery, maybe Freddy in Space 2, maybe Security Breach, who knows? Moving on to some IRL entertainment news about FNAF, Sally Corporations, who if you don't know are the people who are behind the dark ride for FNAF, made a tweet not too long ago talking about the FNAF movie. They say the moment we've all been waiting for, hashtag Five Nights at Freddy's is finally being made into a movie. We can't wait to experience hashtag FNAF on the big screen, and who knows, maybe a hashtag dark ride will be next, little winky face. So I'll put up the promotional images for the Sally Corporation dark ride for FNAF up on screen. This has been waiting to be bought by a company for so, so, so many years. Since like 2015, 2016. So the fact that they are not only talking about FNAF, but they're also finally talking about FNAF in 2021, hinting at the possibility of this ride finally becoming a real thing, is very exciting news. Of course, it's not confirming that it's going to be happening, but it does give us quite a bit of hope. So if you can't see in my background, right there, and you missed my video on the restock of the Sanshi FNAF 1 plushies, then you might have missed that Sanshi is getting their license back, in fact they already have it back, and they have been, once again, restocking and re-releasing products from all the way back in, again, like 2015, 2016. Like I just said, they've already restocked the plushies, and they just restocked their security badge. I've already picked mine up, it should be arriving, it says Wednesday, so again, subscribe if you don't want to miss that. They tweeted out, start your new job, write and show off you survived past night 3 with our new security badge. Follow the link below to grab this addition to our official FNAF collection. And as you can see, it has Freddy's head, it says Fazbear Entertainment, security, 
and it has Chica up at the top. A very nice badge. Like I said, I've already copped mine. I'll make a video on it when it arrives. Like I said, I am going through these pretty fast just because we have quite a lot of topics to talk about, and this is probably my favorite topic. Not only because this tweet of mine blew up, getting over 7,000 likes and 500 retweets, but also because it is a official teaser for Markiplier's next Choose Your Own Adventure project releasing literally in a couple of days. He said in his Jack Box and Chill livestream that it releases around the weekend or at the latest early next week, which is again, a couple of days from now. And this is the teaser that he shows off. And as you can see, it's a animatronic version of his alter ego Wilford Warpstash in the FNAF 6 salvage room. This is absolutely incredible. I don't even care if this is not necessarily a FNAF project, like it could be completely, you know, something completely different. I'm hyped from this one image alone. Of course, I would love for the entire project to be FNAF themed. Think about it. You walk at a Markiplier restaurant and his alter egos are different animatronics. That would be so cool. But even still, dude, looking at a official teaser for a project that has a, a animatronic version of Wilford Wharfstash is... Just, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. I don't know if this is made by the same person who made the Wilford Wolfstash animatronic back in, again, 2015, 2016. I think it was more 2015 though. Was that a meal? I feel like a meal did that. The person who made candies. Anyways, I'm hyped for this. Again, I don't know if the entire project is FNAF themed. He just gave us this one screenshot to go off of. It should be important to mention that this is for everybody. You don't have to be a member of his channel to view it, which is very generous of Mark. And again, it releases very soon. Now, I was gonna post this FNAF news video a couple days ago, but I never got around to it. So I do have a lot of FNAF AR news that's kind of outdated at this point, so I'll just go through them all quickly. They released some 3D profile icons for Toy Freddy, Blackheart Bonnie, Afton, Mangle, and just recently they also did it with Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, uh, the new Aztec skins. And now something that's strange is that you have to pay five bucks for these, like actual cash. Not Faz tokens, not event tokens, you can't even get them from like drops when you defeat an animatronic and, and when they go out to salvage, I'm pretty sure. So you have to buy them with cash, which I think is just, it's so dumb, honestly, it's a really dumb decision. I've already talked about it in my FNAF AR video uh, like a couple hours ago, but I'm just not a fan of it at all. I think they look amazing, I it's, it's a weird addition, but I do think they look pretty cool. It's just paying five bucks for each and every single 3D icon, definitely not worth it. And then they had a lot of hints to the upcoming character, who it's gonna be. We all thought it was gonna be Withered Bonnie because they had old, they talked about facing them, old, withered animatronic, face, withered Bonnie doesn't have a face, and then they completely bamboozled us and released a like Egyptian Aztec event okay i like the i like the skins i think they look freaking amazing but like come on man we're like a quarter through the entire year and you've released four skins and that's freaking it like we need a new character like we need that gameplay update like they've got a lot to work on and it, it just i i mean i hope they're doing it behind the scenes if they're not giving us to it publicly they better be working on big things behind the scenes because Again, I, and I always say this, the game has been out for over a year and a couple months and like they're barely scratching the surface and it's still the same goddamn game. I'm not going to go on another FNAF AR tangent. You can go watch my FNAF AR video after this if you want to listen to me rant about Illumix and their corporate decisions. And I guess that would be a good time to do that because that's kind of all the news I have. Like I said, quite a few small topics that I rushed through pretty fast, but as long as I get the news out there, I did my job. A lot of stuff to be looking forward to. Mark's project, FNAF AR, uh, well, eh. <laughs> Possibility of the Sally Corporation dark ride becoming a possibility, and of course, Security Breach. And the books, of course, and the books. So that's gonna be it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.